Tijuana. My name is Dave, and this is TNT Truth and Training. We're in section 1.2 of your book, Grace in Action, and we're talking about today the holiness of God. Let's jump right into it. We're in your book, Grace in Action, and we're talking about something very, very important. We're talking about God and the fact that He is holy. In this section, 1.2, we're talking about the holiness of God. And I want you to understand that God is a holy God, which simply means this, He is without sin. To better understand this, think about this way. Our amazing God is perfect, not only without sin, but God Himself has never done anything wrong at all. The world tries to say He's not a perfect God. Sinful people try to say that God is not truly a loving God. And they try to mix, let's imagine this if you would, this being God. They try to take the purity of God, the holiness of God, because God is pure and holy, kind of like this illustration here, water is clear and pure. And they try to mix it with their sinful ideas. They say, you know what, if God is so holy, then why does he let good people die in Bad people live. Ah, I don't think he's a holy, righteous God. I don't think he's a just God. Some people say if God is holy, then why does he let bad things happen? He's not a righteous God. He's not a holy God. And they try to take sin and mix it in with God. But I want you to notice something. Sin and God does not mix It will always separate because God is a holy and righteous God. And no matter what the world may say about him, he is perfect and without sin. And his purity and his holiness will always be separate from the ways of the world. But there's something you need to realize. When it comes to us, we're different. Think about this. Revelations chapter 4 verse 8 says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. This verse is written by John. And John was talking about the angels in heaven and how they cry out, Holy, 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 God, you are perfect, without sin, sacred, and almighty. But we are so different. And because God is perfect and heaven is without sin, we cannot go into heaven with sin. Which brings me to the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. We talked about them when we were in our start zone. But I need to talk about them again because it's very important. Because, you see, Adam and Eve made a horrible decision. A decision that made it where we are not holy and like God. Because their decision passed on to us. And that is called sin. You see, because of Adam and Eve's choice to disobey God, sin entered into the world. See, the the world was was perfect at one point. Well over 2,000 years ago, the world didn't have sin and problems and sickness, but something dark entered into the world. And that darkness came because Adam and Eve made a decision to do it their way instead of God's way, and then it brought forth sin, sickness, death. It's not pretty. It's really actually very ugly and dark. And because of that curse they put on the earth, because of their choice to do it their way instead of God's way, it cursed us too. You see, because of this, we're all born in sin. Every one of us, we don't seek after God and righteousness. We seek after what we want instead of what God wants. And, and that's never what God wanted from the very beginning for us. God wanted us to be happy and holy and, and live a successful life filled with goodness, not sin. Now, I want you to understand something very, very important. God's intentions were always for us to be holy like him, separate from sin. It's kind of like this glass. It's empty. He wanted to fill our life with goodness and and righteousness, holiness, and purity. But we have allowed, because of, of our choosing, for sin to come in. We have allowed for this world to affect us like Adam and Eve were influenced by doing it their way. And so sin started to fill our hearts from the day we were born. Awful thing, isn't it? And that was never God's intentions for our life. For a matter of fact, because we're not holy, 
we have sin in our life, and this is what the Bible says, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there's none righteous. That means there's no, nobody that's good. There's nobody that's pure. There's nobody that's clean as God is. And all of us have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. But because of this, God wanted to redeem us. God wanted to do something uh, very important in our lives. Listen to this. The Bible teaches us how to be right with God. And the way we can be right with God is simply learning that God wants to forgive us. And this is how he did it. 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus into the world. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. His only begotten son being Jesus. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He came to die and shed his blood for you and for me. And the most wonderful thing about this is the simple fact that all we have to do is simply believe that we are sinners. Because of Adam and Eve's choice, we're born in sin. But God loves us. And he cared so much for us that he sent his son to die for us. And and, and the Bible shows us that we can be right with God. We can be holy. But in order to do that, we have to believe that we are sinners. And Jesus Christ died for our sins, but he was buried and rose again. And if we believe that, then we too can have forgiveness of sins. I want to show you this. This is so important. The Bible teaches us how we can be right. See, in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he being God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. The Bible refers to it as being made white as snow, taking away all that darkness in our life. Now I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to show you God's intentions for us is to have this clarity and purity, this holiness in our lives. And he simply wants through his death to bring this to our life cleanliness, godliness, purity and righteousness, holiness. And if we would believe and trust him, this is the truth. We can be holy in God's sight just by simply confessing our sins. Remember the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He wants to do this for you and me. We can, be, we can be holy in the sight of God. When, when we trust Jesus as our Savior, God forgives us of our sins and we become holy in His sight. That, that doesn't mean we're perfect. It just means the Holy Spirit lives in you. Isn't that cool? And you're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. And, and the, the fact of the matter is when you make mistakes, if we confess and ask God to forgive us, God says, I'll forgive you of those things and take them away. You know, people are not so kind. They look at you and say, oh, you're, you're not a good person. You did this, and I'll never forget what you've done. But God will always look at you through the blood and say, I have forgiven him. And in my eyes, he is holy. And every time you ask for forgiveness, God is willing to forgive you of those things and help us. Here's what the Bible says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, everything you do in life, Have prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God in everything we do in life. Let's make it a point we go to God and pray and seek his face and say, God, I can't do this without you. I need you. Every step of my my life, I need you. And we create that relationship with God. And that holiness that God has, it can never be influenced by sin. We can mess up, we can make mistakes, but God is, God is righteous and loving, and He can help us get back up. Here's something very important to learn. Revelations 4 8, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. One day we'll be able to say those same words as the angel. I can't wait for that moment. That's it. This has been Grace in Action, and we just finished up 1.2, the holiness of God. We'll see you next time.